Hola, hi, this is Al, your statistics instructor. Let's get to work. In this video, we are going to continue our study of uh, data coming from a Poisson distribution, right? Data with a Poisson likelihood from a Bayesian perspective. The uh, extension that we are going to be doing with respect to what we did in the past in another video now this time we are going to consider not only a single observation coming from a Poisson distribution what we're going to be doing is we are going to be considering a sample with a Poisson likelihood okay let's begin So, the parameter of interest is mu. We're going to be using mu to refer to the mean of a Poisson random variable. Okay. So, uh, now the likelihood that we're going to be considering is the likelihood of a sample, meaning a set of uh, n observations coming from that uh, particular distribution. So y1, y2, up to yn, right? We are going to have n data points, if you will. And uh, these guys are independent, and they are identically distributed, meaning that they come from the same Poisson distribution, OK? So now we could uh, write that down as the probability of observing these given the parameter mu. Now we know that the uh, likelihood of a single observation given the parameter of interest would be, you know, just evaluating the probability mass function at that particular point. And uh, what we also know, uh, if you have taken uh, STA260, for instance, what you know is that the likelihood of a, you know, a set of independent um, and identically distributed random variables is given by the product of the individual likelihoods. And that's, you know, due to the independence. And since we're assuming that these guys are independent, what we're going to have is just the product of the individual likelihoods. So let me remind you that the uh, likelihood for uh, an individual, uh, one of these individuals, one of these uh, observations would be uh, mu to the power y1. In this case, that's what we would have, y1. divided by y1 factorial e to the power minus mu. Make sense? That's for the first one. And then we multiply by the second one, right? The likelihood of the second observation Make sense? And we just keep going. N times. So last one, Yn, Yn. Right? And these are products. Right? We're multiplying these guys. That times that. Okay. Okay. So now let's do a little bit of algebra. So let me write that down like this. So it would be the same as one over y one factorial times y two factorial times y three factorial up to y n factorial, right? 
the product of all those factorials. Y2 up to Yn. Okay, now we will have mu to the power y1 plus y2 up to yn. Agreed? So let me write that down like that. Uh, y2 plus yn. Oops. Yn. That's what I want. Make sense? Now we have e to the power minus mu times e to the power minus mu times e to the power minus mu. So we have e to the power negative n times mu. Make sense? So that would be the likelihood of our sample. Make sense? Okay, so now uh, our prior distribution, just like for a single observation, we are going to consider the uh, case of the conjugate prior, okay? And we know from that case, from the single observation case, that the right family of distributions, the one that is going to work as the conjugate prior, is uh, the gamma, okay? The gamma distribution. Okay, so we are going to be using the same uh, to find the posterior distribution, right, we know that it's going to be uh, a joint divided by the marginal, right, the joint between mu, and in this case, it's going to be the joint between uh, mu and y1 and y2 and so on, right? And, uh, uh, well, maybe I should have used here a uh, lowercase letters, right, because uh, we uh, observe that uh, sample, right, if you want to be consistent here with the uh, notation is once you observe these would be this, right? So they are random, but once you observe them they become particular values, okay? Okay, so anyway, just a matter of uh, notation, if you want to be super careful, then uh, the, the sample, once you observe the sample, they become lower cases, because we use lower case for, uh, you know, uh, actual values, and we use upper case for uh, random variables, okay? Anyway, so, once you have observed those, right, we're going to have those lower cases here, comma, uh, y2 comma y sub n okay so it would be the joint divided by the marginal okay let me copy these guys here Let's change these. Now instead of having a single observation, we have several. This is the same prior. Now the uh, likelihood is slightly more complicated, right? It's the product of those individual likelihoods, right? But the uh, same idea applies, right? It's the probability of the joint between mu and these guys, and the uh, 
marginal here of the uh, sample, right? So if you want to, if you have that joint and you want just the marginal, you integrate with respect to the single variable that uh, is in your way, in this case mu, right? Okay, so let's find the numerator. The numerator is this guy, right? Prior times likelihood. So we have this, and let me change these to lowercase uh, y's to be, you know, consistent with the uh, notation that we're using here. Now these guys have been observed, they are no longer uh, they are a sample, so they are no longer a uh, random variable, okay? So that's the numerator times, well, that's a likelihood times our prior, and our prior is this guy, right? So we could simplify that a little bit, right? Instead of this, let me use that uh, sigma notation, okay? And, uh, well, first I'll do that, then I'm going to make some extra changes here. So uh, let me use that sigma notation for the sum of these guys, the sum of the yi's, i goes from 1 up to n, Okay, so same thing, right? With our shorthand notation for the sum of the yi's. Now, let me place this one here. That's also, you know, uh, a constant with respect to mu. Now, let me combine this, right? So it would be the sum of the y's plus r minus 1. Right? Mu to the sum of the yi's times mu to the power r minus 1. It's mu to the sum of the yi's plus r minus 1. Agreed? Now let me uh, do a little bit of algebra with uh, these guys. So e to the negative n times mu uh, times e to the negative uh, v times mu. We could just factor out in the uh, exponent that mu, right? And what we would have would be this, right? n plus v. If you want, well, we could place it in front. Okay, so that product is the same as this, right? Okay, so that's our numerator after after a little bit of algebra. Now let's talk about that denominator. It looks kind of scary, but it isn't too bad. We'll see. That denominator is just the integral from 0 to infinity infinity of, you know, this guy. With respect to mu. Make sense? If you take a look at uh, you know the generic expression for the uh, Bayes theorem in this case, when you have a sample, right? You have to integrate that product for all mu's, right? And then you're going to get the marginal of the uh, sample. Okay. Okay. So anyway. Oh come on. That's better. Um, now, uh, let me make
make a little, uh, you know, change of variables. Now you see where I'm going, right? After what we did with a single observation, you should immediately uh, know what I'm going to be doing next, right? You go, hey, I know what you're going to be doing now. You're going to pull out these nasty looking constants and then you're going to make a change of variables because you realize that mu to the power something minus one e to the power minus something times mu that looks a lot like the kernel of a gamma random variable right so and then you're going to complete it and then you're going to be done yeah that's exactly what we're going to be doing so let's do that next okay so let um, r star right be equal to the uh, summation of the yi's plus r and uh, v star So we pull out that constant and then using our new notation now what we have here is R star and we have E star then we just complete the integrand the uh, quantity the function that is inside our integral and we know that the constant that we need looks something like this right but we're going to have e star and r star instead so let's put it here so r star we have V star, we have R star as well in the denominator, but since we are dividing by gamma evaluated at R star, we have to multiply by that same constant, so we don't change anything, right? So we're basically multiplying by a 1, and that's uh, legal from a mathematical perspective and since we're multiplying by this guy here we divide by that same constant and as I said that's the same as multiplying by a 1 and that is not illegal and then we are integrating a gamma with parameters r star and v star over its entire support so that integral is just 1 so in the end this is our denominator, right? It looks kind of ugly, but it, that's what the uh, denominator uh, turns out to be. So, let's find our posterior. Finally, we just substitute what we found. We know that our posterior is the ratio between numerator and denominator right the uh, denominator we already have it there let me copy paste that guy it's here the uh, numerator it's here So note that, yeah, at first, that product of factorials looked kind of scary, but note that, you know, 
this is just a constant that will cancel out and these guys will cancel out as well right so in the end what we have is just this guy mu to the power summation of y i plus r minus 1 times e to the negative n plus v times mu that's the numerator and then the only thing that uh, survives from the uh, denominator is gamma evaluated at r star divided by v star to the r star power right so and then as you can imagine we're going to rewrite things uh, this is the same as multiplying v star to the r star power times this divided by gamma evaluated at r star right so let me write it down like that and then times this oops and then we note that uh, the sum of the yi's plus r happens to be what we defined as r star right and n plus v is the same as v star right so this is the same as mu to the power r star and this guy is just v star right and we realize that then the uh, posterior distribution of mu given the entire sample given those n observations coming from a Poisson well that's just a gamma with parameters r star and uh, v star right so our posterior has a beautiful gamma distribution with parameters r star where r star is this and v star is n plus v okay makes sense now final note uh, some people refer to what I'm about to write down here as updating rules okay updating rules so add the sum of the observations to r that is going to give you r star right and then the other one is add the number of observations to v and that is going to give you v star right add, oops add the number of observations to v right so that is going to help you find uh, the new parameters the parameters of the new uh, distribution meaning and by new what I mean the uh, parameters of the posterior distribution right remember that R and V are the parameters of your prior so to obtain the parameters of your posterior all you have to do is okay R star is going to be the old R plus the sum of the Y I's and um, for V 
v star is going to be the old v plus the sample size and that's it okay so let's quickly recap what we did so uh, we are considering now uh, data coming from a Poisson distribution in this case we are taking into account an entire sample of observations and observations coming from a Poisson likelihood right so uh, we are using a prior that is a gamma because that's the uh, conjugate prior so as we could see that is going to help us do this quickly now that we have shown that the posterior distribution is also a gamma right and uh, if we bear in mind that uh, updating rule right it's going to be very easy to uh, obtain the uh, new parameters of the posterior distribution of mu given the uh, sample make sense okay so that's it for now thank you so much for watching please take care and keep working hard see you next time bye